Black Friday seems to have been another smash hit for the U.S. economy. Any economy will welcome this news, but when it's the world's largest and the developed market growth leader, everyone benefits. U.S. consumers have gone on buying binges before, only to regret it when the bubble bursts, like it did back in 2008. Is this one of those times, or is there staying power? Recent U.S. consumer strength is no mere blip. Real spending is rising at 4% annual rate, and there seems to be no letting up in the fourth quarter. Non-auto sales are rising at 6% plus annual pace, and even with flat auto sales, the overall numbers are strong. Given that the U.S. consumer, at 68% of GDP, packs more of a punch than for most OECD nations, this is good news for overall economic growth. Job growth is a principal driver of this strong consumer spending. U.S. employment numbers are on an impressive eight-year run. Wage growth has been muted for most of the cycle, but recently approached 3% year over year. Put these together and there's more consumer cash floating around now than at any point during the last decade. Increasingly, pundits are starting to worry about sustainability. Businesses complain about the lack of skilled employees. The unemployment rate is down to 3.7%, which is well below the level that most economists think is sustainable. The weekly unemployment insurance claimant numbers are also remarkably low, having fallen steadily since 2009 to the current 200,000 mark. These are typical late cycle signs. So is the party almost over? These extremely tight indicators ignore one key fact. Labor force participation has been very low in the current cycle suppressed by the severity of the Great Recession and the sluggish recovery when millions of workers were sidelined. This phenomenon dulled the numbers through 2016, but then without any particular policy action, the tightening labor market in the U.S. began to draw the disaffected back in. Since then, over one million young workers have scored their first meaningful job, and after a long hiatus, mid-career folks are flooding back into the market. There are still millions more waiting for their chance, and this could go on for some time, extending the labor market's capacity to grow. Pessimists will point to two potential spoilers. First, what if something jolts consumers? Are they so leveraged that any tripwire will level them? Actually, the debt to income ratio has fallen since the Great Recession. Helping the situation is a higher level of savings from disposable income. During the light cycle bubble, the savings rate was 3.5%. Now, it's nearly double that. This doesn't look like a U.S. consumer debt crisis in the works. Second is interest rates. While better debt dynamics, the recent rise in mortgage and consumer credit rates won't hurt as much. But regardless, we're coming off a long period of ultra-low interest rates, and normalization could be a big shock to many. Nonetheless, consumer confidence is still reaching for cyclical highs despite the fact that the U.S. rate hikes have been in the works for over 30 months. The bottom line? The world's biggest spenders are employed in greater numbers, getting higher wages, are more confident, saving more prudently, and still very active at the till. While trade tiffs are making others twitchy, American consumers are on a roll, and we see more capacity to keep things going for some time to come. Thanks for watching. Peter Hall will be back again next week.